Here we are, folks, locked on Lions on YouTube, video and audio together. Let's do this. You are locked on Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Here we are, everybody. Let's plate this dish on a Tuesday, June 1st into Wednesday. Actually, it's Wednesday, June 1st into Thursday, June 2nd. I'm already screwing this up, but it's Locked On Lions on the Locked On Podcast Network. Indeed, your team every day. Matt Derry with you. And yes, here we are on video as well as audio. Thanks for making this your first listen each and every day right here on Locked On Lions. YouTube channel is here. So subscribe and find us. You can also, of course, find us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks, D-E-R-Y Speaks, at Locked On Lions on Twitter, and the Matt Dairy Facebook fan page. OTA is going on for the Lions. Tomorrow, Eric Eager is going to join us, the VP of Research and Development from Pro Football Focus. Can't wait to have Eric on the show uh, tomorrow. We'll get a little more insight on what PFF thinks of the Lions and what Eric thinks of the Lions as well. Coming up on the show today, and again, bear with me because I'm uh, we're on video and I'm all messed up. But yesterday, if you listened to the show, I mentioned the Packers' problems. Green Bay's having issues at OTAs already. Uh-oh, here come the Lions. <laughs> no, the Lions aren't winning the division. Can we stop with this? But, but I want to highlight some things that's going on in Green Bay. Peter Bukowski, our buddy with Locked On Packers, talked about it yesterday, and I kind of want to piggyback and uh, swipe some of that stuff from Peter. I actually called Pete today about that. We'll get into that coming up on the show. Also, NFC North division rankings. Our friends at the Peacock and Williamson Show went over all of the divisions. What's the best division in football? What's the worst? Where's the NFC North? And what this means for the Lions for their schedule. We'll get into that coming up on the show today. Also, the latest on this John Kaminsky that the Lions picked up yesterday. A bit of a bust with the Falcons, but apparently, according to Field Yates of ESPN, uh, the Lions beat out a bunch of teams to get him in terms of the waiver wire and the waiver order. And so there were some teams that were interested in Kaminsky. Um, So the Lions, I'll tell you about some of those teams coming up on the show as well. And also, uh, Bleacher Report says there's a hidden gem for the Lions as far as their draft goes. Who's that player? We'll tell you about that coming up on the show as well, but we welcome you back in. Thanks for listening to Locked On Lions. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm even wearing my Locked On shirt today for the uh, for the first broadcast. I hope this works. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm one of the last to do this, so just bear with me, everybody, as we do this today here on Locked On Lions. All right, so Peter Bukowski, the legend, um, from Locked On Today and, of course, the host of the Locked On Packers podcast. Uh, Peter talked on his show yesterday about the swirling, uh, what's the word, uh, dark cloud that is hovering over OTAs up there in beautiful Ashwaubenon, Wisconsin. Three things are going on with the Packers. Now, does this mean that the Lions are going to win the division because there's problems in Green Bay? No, that's the dumbest thing of all time. Matt LaFleur and the Packers win 12 games every year without blinking. They're still in the NFC North. They're still the kings of the NFC North. But this notion that maybe Green Bay is not having the kind of offseason that we're having here, yes, you heard me, Lions fans, we're having here with Detroit, is gaining a little bit of steam. Let me explain. Number one, David Bakhtiari, all right, is not taking part in OTAs. Matt LaFleur says, the head coach of the Packers, we're hoping he's there for mini a training camp next week, or excuse me, a mandatory mini camp next week. What do you mean hoping? David Bakhtiari had surgery in December of 2020 for his ACL. He's 18 months, or excuse me, 19 months post-surgery according to Peter Bukowski. Remember, he played last year in week 18 against the Leos at left tackle. He's one of the best left tackles in the game, but then didn't play in the playoff game the next week 
when the Packers lost uh, in the snow to Jimmy G and the uh, 49ers. And now he's not participating in OTAs? Why is that? Huh. Very, very interesting. More swelling in the knee, not participating. LaFleur says, oh, this was always the plan. Well, wait a minute. He didn't have surgery last year. He had surgery two years ago. He's 19 months post-surgery, one of the best left tackles in the game. And maybe, just maybe, he's not doing well. And that would be, obviously, a coup for anybody having to play Green Bay. And you're talking about one of the best left tackles and the guy guarding the blind side of one Aaron Rodgers. That's number one. That's certainly a concern up there in Green Bay. Number two, uh, actually 1B, is not only is Bakhtiari not participating, he's there, but he's standing on the sidelines. But one thing LaFleur does not like is that some of his best defensive players, Adrian Amos, uh, Jair Alexander, Preston Smith, all, all are not, N-O-T, not taking part in OTAs. They are just haven't shown up. And for the Lions, we talked about this. The attendance has been terrific for Detroit in terms of uh, players being at OTAs. It's been awesome, but not necessarily for Green Bay. You're talking about three of their better defensive players. Uh, they're two best secondary guys. You could argue Savage in there, but Am Amos, Jair's a good as, as good a corner as there is in the game. And Preston Smith, their best pass rusher, not at OTAs. So there's some rumbling there about participation with the illustrious Green Bay Packers. Uh, number two. Now we can go to num uh, letter B here. Guess who has got the dropsies? Uh-oh. Christian Watson, supposed to be the next Devontae Adams. No, he's not. But he was their highest uh, draft picked, a a highest picked receiver in the draft. And a guy that everybody said, oh, he'll just step right in and he'll be the guy. He's, nobody's going to be Devontae, but he's supposed to be Christian Watson, a big time target for this operation there in Green Bay. He's had a drop in every practice. And for the open practices where the media has been, already things are being written about Christian Watson struggling to catch footballs from Jordan Love. Now, again, Aaron Rodgers isn't there. That's going to be number three on my list, and I mentioned this yesterday. But, you know, Watson's supposed to be the guy. They lost MVS. They lost Devontae. Watson was supposed to come in, and one of the reasons why he was not drafted in the first round, first of all, there were a lot of good receivers in this draft, but Christian Watson coming from North Dakota State is going to see a lot of targets this year. But the question always was his hands. Great route runner, fast, big, had a great senior bowl, all of those things. But is he going to be able to hold on to the football? Is he going to be able to catch it? And according to a lot of people around Green Bay, uh, it's been a little bit of a struggle to start the season, uh, at least the off season for Christian Watson in, in catching the football. And then again, number three, tonight, the match. Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady going up against Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes on TNT on uh, the big golf match. Aaron Rodgers is playing golf. The hair's flowing. He's doing his thing, but he's not, N-O-T, not at OTAs. Patrick Mahomes took part in some OTAs with the Chiefs. Josh Allen took part in some OTAs with the Bills, not Aaron Rodgers. Keep an eye on that. Do I think this is going to lead to the Lions winning the division? No. Put me on record right now. The Lions are not winning the division. Green Bay is. Okay? I don't even think the Lions are going to pass the Vikings. But let's talk a little bit about Green Bay having a little bit of issues right now um, with their situation there at OTAs. All right, coming up next, uh, NFC North. Where does it rank in terms of all of the divisions? We're going to get to that. Uh, coming up next, our guys from Peacock and Williamson talked about it. First, though, we got to mention and discuss Built Bar, baby. Oh, you know I love Built Bars. Well, now, Built Bars got granola bars. We've been asking and Built has delivered. Built granola bars are here. They come in three unbelievable flavors, chocolate peanut butter, chocolate coconut, and white chocolate berry. You want to try all three flavors, you can get a mix box 
at Built.com right now. These are so different from the bars and the puffs. Built granola bars are loaded with granola. It's the perfect combination of crunch and chewiness, but just like the bars and puffs, these babies are packed with protein and covered in 100% real chocolate. 150 calories, 15 grams of protein, only 4 grams of sugar. Built granola bars will change your world. They've cracked the code built as a how to build uh, how to build better granola. Let's do this. Go to built.com right now to get built granola bars. Go to the website built.com. Use promo code locked15 and get 15% off your order. That's promo code locked15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, so NFL division power rankings from our buddies at Peacock and Williamson, the Locked On NFL podcast, the Peacock and Williamson podcast that they do each and every day. Uh, follow them on Twitter. Go to Locked On Network on Twitter and check out the division power rankings. Now, uh, Brian and Matt, Brian Peacock, Matt Williamson, ranked the divisions. Best division in football, they say the AFC West. All right, and why not? Chiefs, Chargers, Broncos, Raiders are going to be really good. Worst division in football, AFC South. Houston and Jacksonville are dumpster fires. Tennessee may take a step back. And how good are the Colts? We're going to find out with Matt Ryan. So as far as this, in terms of what this means for the Lions, let's do this. Okay, number one, they go in this order in terms of strength, uh, strongest to weakest. AFC West, best, followed by the AFC North. NFC West, NFC East, AFC East, NFC North, six out of eight teams, or six out of eight divisions, NFC South, and then the AFC South. All right? So the Lions, if you look at their schedule, okay, are going to be playing six games, of course, against the NFC North. I'm not breaking any news here. That's how the schedule works. The Lions will be playing... um, six games against their own division, the NFC North. What about the uh, NFC South, which is considered, uh, as we said before, um, the seventh worst, the, the second worst division, the seventh best division out of eight. Well, as far as that goes, the Lions will be playing Carolina out of that division. AFC South was considered the worst, and the Lions will be playing the worst team in that division in terms of record, at least from last year, Jacksonville. So as far as the three worst divisions, the Lions are playing eight of their 17 games against the worst divisions on this list. NFC North, NFC South, AFC South. The AFC West is considered the best, and the Lions are playing one, uh, uh, um, excuse me, they're playing no teams from the AFC West. None. The second best division is the AFC North. Lions played them last year. Uh, Cincinnati, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, and Cleveland not playing any of the teams from that division. The NFC West, the third best division. Lions are playing one team from that division, Seattle, and that's it. Four games against the NFC East, which comes in fourth. Giants, Cowboys, Eagles, um, and the Commanders. And then four games against the AFC East, which is considered the fifth best division. What does this all mean? It means the Lions schedule is very, very forgiving. Very forgiving. Remember a year ago, I told you, year one, Dan Campbell, rookie coach, rookie GM, and Jared Goff instead of Matthew Stafford, it was going to be a long year. Now the roster's better. The schedule's much easier than it was a year ago. And with the rotation and getting to play the NFC East and the AFC East, that's a bit of a break. That's definitely a break for this football team. So, you know, I I find it kind of interesting. You know, I'm looking at the rankings right now. Again, NFC North being six out of eight. I think that's I think that's accurate. Yeah, the you could make an argument the NFC South. Well, no, you can't. Carolina and Atlanta are abysmal. Abysmal. It depends on how New Orleans is and really how Minnesota would be. AFC South is pretty bad. But again, if Tennessee and the Colts are really, really good and 
Jacksonville is is better than people think, that could change. But right now, I kind of agree with what Brian and Matt are saying. But it's a break, certainly for the Lions, um, when you look at where these divisions sit. Eight of their 17 games are against the three worst divisions. Can they make hay? We'll find out. It is the Lions we're talking about here. All right, so we'll have to wait and see on that. All right, John Kaminsky is the newest Detroit Lion picked up yesterday off waivers from the Atlanta Falcons. Um, And we touched on this a little bit um, yesterday that Kaminsky was picked up. Today, Field Yates, the uh, pride of ESPN, made a statement or a comment um, that there were a bunch of teams. What did I do with this? You know, this is, again, this is on video, and already I'm screwing this up. Uh, bu- 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 where did I just had this thing, and I lost it. Field Yates, I'm going to find it right now. This is, you know, you're watching me struggle. All right, here we go. Field Yates of ESPN says the, that John Kaminsky was a very popular player when it comes to waiver claims and that the Lions beat out seven teams to get him. Kaminsky, the defensive end, defensive tackle, spent three seasons with the Falcons. They got rid of him. But because of the order, it goes by order of worst record from a year ago, the Lions were highest on the waiver priority list and teams like Washington, Indianapolis, Cleveland, Houston, Arizona, Minnesota, and Cincinnati all put in claims for Kaminsky, but he was awarded to the Lions based off of the team's record of three wins last year. If you missed it yesterday, Kaminsky was a fourth round pick by the Falcons in 2019, didn't play much his rookie year, played a lot in 2020, 13 of 16 games, started one of them, even had a fumble recovery, Um, but then he didn't play much last year, just four games. He's 27 years old, pretty young, final year of his rookie deal, and was beaten out by a ton of different guys in Atlanta um, and just never really has panned out as a player. Uh, Jeff Risden, our buddy from the Lions Wire, said yesterday on Twitter that some people from Atlanta compared him to Jelani to buy. That's not going to work for me. But if it's a player that eight, seven other teams wanted, maybe the Lions would find something here. But that is some interesting news for sure. Is Brad Holmes loves, loves accumulating um, defensive linemen. So we'll have to wait and see on that and see how, how, how this affects the rotation and if this kid can get an opportunity. All right, who is the surprise rookie gem of the Lions class? Uh, Bleacher Report brought that up today, and we'll talk about that coming up next. First, though, our partners at Bet Online. Continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. Bet online. It's your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today, betonline.net, or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. It's easy, betonline.net. Get you there. You got NHL playoffs tonight, Rangers and Lightning. Oh, 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 oh. I love when the Rangers score and that, that, that song goes. Uh, anyway, Rangers, Lightning, you want to bet on it? Uh, Tigers, Twins tonight, same thing. Bet online, it is where the game starts. All right, back on Locked On Lions, right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making this your first listen. Ian Wharton wrote a piece the other day on Bleacher Report, unveiling his list, picking a surprise rookie gem for each NFL team in 2022. For the Lions, Malcolm Rodriguez, the day three linebacker from Oklahoma State. Wharton writes, quote, the Lions knocked their draft class out of the park Headlining acquisitions, Aiden Hutchinson and Jamison Williams ensured their status as an immediate draft winner. Looking deeper into their class reveals other possible starters, though. Sixth-round linebacker Malcolm Rodriguez is a perfect fit for this coaching staff that values toughness, instincts, and effort. He joins a position group that racked up tackles but offered little other impact. That is true. The starting trio of JRM, 
Alex Anzalone gains media poster boy. And Derek Barnes combined for just three sacks, one interception, 13 pass deflections, and 46 appearances. Uh, Rodriguez is his 5'11", 232, but flies around the field making plays, blah, blah, blah. Led Oklahoma State's defense, blah, blah, blah. Lions DC Aaron Glenn should unleash Rodriguez, much like how Cleveland used, oh, of course, we didn't draft him, a JOK as a Swiss Army knife who could flow to the ball and thrive in space. End quote. Prize rookie gem, Malcolm Rodriguez. Now, again, who's going to start at linebacker is anybody's guess for your Honolulu Blue and Silver Gladiators this coming season. I mean, you got Anzalone back. They drafted Derek Barnes last year in the fourth round. Um, Jared Davis is back, thumbs down. Josh Woods, Sean Dion Hamilton, who I, I heard the staff likes, Chris Board, Anthony Pittman. They've got a lot of guys. And now Rodriguez. So, oh, and Natrez Patrick, who they picked up from Denver. So they got a lot of different guys. I'm not ready to hop on the Malcolm Rodriguez is going to start bandwagon yet. There's a reason he dropped to the sixth round. All right. All the draft mix and, and, and expert says this guy can't cover anybody. That boy, if he's at linebacker and he sees a play in front of him, he can go get a, a running back. He can go get a tight end quickly, maybe on a slant, and make a tackle for a six yard gain. But if he's in coverage, it's a struggle. Yes, he was the MVP of the Fiesta Bowl. Yes, he played well for Oklahoma State. Just, you know, lion type of player, four year guy, tough, team captain. But a six-round linebacker becoming a starter? We saw Derek Barnes last year, people were calling, including me, for him to get more time, and he struggled. Hopefully, Derek Barnes in year two is the guy that takes the, the reins. But as far as a hidden gem, I'm all for Malcolm Rodriguez. I'm all for somebody stepping up and being a linebacker that can be a star and be effective. I just don't know how many linebackers are going to be on the field for this team this year. Extra safeties, extra D linemen, a guy like Julian O'Quara being a hybrid. You know, we'll have to wait and see. I like Rodriguez. I like that pick. I'm all for adding linebackers, but a day three guy, we'll have to see. All right, this is our first foray. Subscribe on our, to our YouTube channel to watch each and every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. Eric Eager from Pro Football Focus joins me tomorrow right here on Locked On Lines. Have a great Wednesday into Thursday, everybody.